Okay. So we're on Hayam and Bays, middle of Taisa, Safila Miyasmi. So Taisa, let's give background. The Gemara says that the Chazaka is a person doesn't pay before, before early. This is a passing like a person does not pay before the due date. And therefore, the person can collect any time as the Chazaka. You can collect up until the due date. The assumption is no one ever paid, and therefore, assumed he can collect no problem. And this is true even when he collects from orphans, meaning the father owes him money and it's before the due date. So the assumption is the father died without paying. And therefore, he can collect from the children. And he does so even without taking a vow, because ordinarily, I take a vow that your father never paid me. But because it's before the time, um, because it's before the time, therefore, uh, the Chazaka didn't pay. So he doesn't have to take a, doesn't have to vow, doesn't have to take a vow, doesn't have to take a shvur. Now Taisa has told us that there's two, there's another din, which is we don't collect, we don't involve ourselves in debts of children that are your sermon, unless the debt is making them lose money because they're collect, because it's collecting this. Otherwise, leave it as it is. Wait till they're old enough to fight, argue their own case. And they're adults, and then we deal with their loan. In the meantime, leave it as is. And there's machlekes as to what re, what's the reason why we don't do that. Why don't we, right? Why don't we involve ourselves uh, in the loan of, in the debts of the children of the Yisrael? So one opinion was because paying back a loan is a mitzvah, and they're too young. And because they're too young. They're not, not mechoyim and mitzvahs, therefore we don't, make the, we don't make them pay now. We don't make them pay their debts. Okay. Now, if that's the case, then even if the guy is coming to collect the debt early, even if the guy is coming to collect the debt early, you can't collect, even though we know certainly the, guy, the father didn't pay, because it's not an issue of whether the father paid or not. The issue is okay. that they're not have to pay it. So that's clear. That's our problem. But Rav Hunar says the reason why we don't maybe we don't take the extract the money from the son that are children is because perhaps the father paid early. Perhaps the father paid off before he died. Perhaps the father paid off before he died. So now the question becomes when there's when when there's when the person died before. At the time, how strong is this chazaka that the father didn't pay? Is it strong enough to override the idea that ordinarily we say that perhaps the father left money behind to pay off his children's loan? Or do we say, no, there's a chazaka that a person doesn't pay early and therefore they didn't, definitely didn't pay early? Yeah? That's the question that Tesis is, is struggling with, going back and forth. And he tried to bring Gaius this way and that way to prove that when, there, when there's children involved, when there's Katanian, we don't collect from the assignment, even though we know for sure that the father didn't pay. And the reason, says Thesis, is because you don't collect a debt when, the, when there are no litigants, and these children aren't litigants yet, because they're too young. Now, what happened, sorry, you, sorry, you don't, you can't accept aid and you can't accept, accept witnesses in the part without the presence if, if you're not in the presence of, litig of the litigants. And in this case, they're too young. What happens if they already have witnesses from the time when the father was alive? Back to square one. You have witnesses that came when the father was still alive. And we know for sure the father didn't pay early because we, don't, we know for sure, the, for sure the father didn't pay because the, father, the, father, the person doesn't pay early. But we also have this concern, maybe the father put it away because he wanted to pay off his debts before he died. The existence of the debt. Existence of the debt, yeah. The witnesses are for the existence of the debt. Yeah. So we kept going back and forth. And Tysus, it seemed, is pushing us in the direction. It's quite clear Tysus is pushing us in the, in the direction of thinking that you um, cannot collect from the children. And the question is if that's true, because the Chorah is Chazaka. And the Chazaka got even pay. And we're not worried about the kid being underage as of. Is not concerned with that, then maybe you should collect from the children. 
Because why not? We know for sure the father owes. So go to the estate and take the money and pay off the debt. Yeah? This is where we are in Tezos. After going back and forth with different rayas. Yeah? Why is she with me? Remember this? Somewhat. Just so I understand the, the basic, yeah. the, the ground, the framework, the Chazaka that, that you didn't pay early, there's no way of overriding that Chazaka. That's what we're trying to find out. But before, but not with, not with the same, just in general. Well, the Gemara asks if bring witnesses and say, oh, he did pay. Oh, if you bring witnesses, then for sure it overrides the Chazaka. So then it could be the same thing with the same. That's the, same, the question. Same That's the question. Which, which, which witnesses? Oh, maybe, maybe the, yeah, maybe the, no. Maybe they, they. Say again? So if, outside of a case you sign him, normally yeah. there's a chazaka that it's before the time, guy says pay me. So, chazakas didn't pay. Chazakas didn't pay. If but you bring witnesses. I come and bring witnesses, but Certainly. I saw him pay. Certainly. Why can't, the, the, why can't we apply the same logic to the assignment? The assignment, they're too young to bring witnesses and start litigating their case, but maybe they will be able to, when they turn 18, find the two witnesses or the evidence and bring it to court to show that that the right. father did So you're saying, but what Ravuna is saying, maybe the guy left behind money to pay. Maybe he actually put money away to pay for it. Or maybe he actually paid. Right. So if he, yeah, maybe he actually paid, right? Yeah. Now, if we have witnesses, then for sure. But if we don't have witnesses, does the Chazak override that? Maybe. That's a very far fetched. But even if we do have witnesses, it's, we're not going to know about it now because the Assyrian can't litigate the case. The Assyrian aren't going to bring the witnesses. And when they're going to get older, they're going to find witnesses how? Or maybe they, yeah, I hear you. Okay, I see what you're saying. Right. No, it's how strong is this chazaka? The chazaka that a person doesn't pay early, how strong is it? Is it strong enough to say that even the father who's about to die isn't paying off early? Or the guy's about to die, he doesn't want to saddle his children with debt, so he pays off, like, like we said about the amana. We said about a widow that a person would pay off before he's dead. He'll pay the kisil because he doesn't want his wife to be burdened. So maybe it's sitting with the same. But over there, they go, over there, Tyson said, that the reason why he paid off for his wife is because it's tied bed in the luxuba. Whereas with the paying off a debt is not in tonight's so So maybe he didn't pay it off early. Tysus remained unsure. Okay. So that Tysus is giving a raya. And this raya actually stands. This raya actually stands. Uh, where is it? In Tysus. So uh, here. Oh. The line starts with the Plukta. Plukta Miu Yeshaviraya. The third word is Miu. Okay, actually, no, we, should look, we should look at the Gemara in Erechen. I sent the picture of the Gemara in Erechen. Let's look at the Gemara before we get to this text. We're not going to understand anything unless we look, look at the Gemara in Erechen. So it's the Gemara in Erechen. Daf Chof Bey is on the I sent you the picture there. It's not, I, there's, you can see by the numbers on the side. But it's actually, I skipped some parts because I'm only quoting a part in the Gea for this discussion. So the Gemara says, Tanan, Shuma Yisayim, and we looked at So over there, the Gemara brings Machlekes, Rav Asi, and Rabbi Yechanan. Rav Asi is the author of the statement, Enes Kokken Lenechse Yisayim, Elin Kain Ribis Echelas, that we do not involve ourselves in paying back the debts of Yisayim and our children unless they are losing money as a result of uh, interest. That's Rav Asi, the one who said that. Rav Yechanan said, Yes, you're correct, Avasi. With one exception, you do collect from the estate of the Yisraelim to pay off the ksuba of his wife. So Rav, Rav Yechanan agrees the premise, except for the issue of paying off the ksuba. So regular debt, no, ksuba, yes. So Rav Yechanan's opinion. Okay, so says the Gemara Tanan, we learned, Shum uh, the evaluation of, of, uh, of, property that belongs to orphans, right? I think this is when you're about to pay, when you're, the halacha is, when you pay off uh, a debt from, when you pay off a debt, sorry, when you're selling property to pay off a debt, you have to make an announcement for 30 days in advance of how you, you appraise it and you announce that you're selling it for a certain property, for a certain amount, and then it gets sold. So the halacha, so I, I, I think so. It was in Rambam recently, right? Mr. Wampo came to appraisal of property inherited by orphans for 30 days. And the property six days, yeah. 
Yeah. So every day you announce the appraisal that someone who wants to come can come and buy at the price. So every day they announce that. So it's not a he spent 30 days announcing the, the, the Yusem's property and 60 days for Hektish, if you have to sell Hektish property. Now, and you make this announcement day and night. So the Gemara asked, under what circumstances would you be um, selling the property of Yusem to pay something off if we don't do that, as Abiyah Hanan Abbasi just did? So under what circumstances would, would, would you be doing that if the Mishnah says if they announce 30 days? So Gemara says, if you're talking about a guy, right? So it's a guy that borrowed money from the father, right? Or lent money to the father, I'm sorry. So the Gemara says, meet Sayas. Are we going to let this guy uh, uh, stand? We're going to wait 30 days. We'll just sell a property right away. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, no. The question is like, will the guy even listen to wait thirty days? He'll just take the property right away. That's so what it seems like from Rabbi translation here. Rather, must be a Jew. Now, if it's collecting, if the so it's a, if it's not a guy because the guy is not listening to our If it's a yid, then why would we be selling the property of the yos? Must be because it is because there's. There's a there's an interest there, and the kids are losing money. If that's the case, Mishaf Kinale, why would we wait 30 days? Let's get the kids going to incur interest in those 30 days. Vela rather, the Leika Acher So it must be that there's no Dubis being collected on this loan. The Katani, and we learned Niskakin that the Bezin is selling the property to pay off a loan. So what kind of loan is it? If it's a loan, if it's a loan from a guy, then he doesn't care about halachas. And if it's a loan from a yid. Then the only way we'd be selling that is if it's uh, interest. And if it's interest, why wait 30 days? Sell it right away. Okay. So first the Gemara discusses Abu Yechanan, and then the next picture you'll see the Gemara answer discusses Ravasi, which is eager for our, our concern here. The Konkam, the Gemara asks, the Ravasi Kasha, because Ravasi challenges Abu Yechanan, the Gemara responds, and the Gemara comes back and says, What about Ravasi himself? So we must therefore say it's talking about a guy. A guy who lent money to the father, Shekibal love, and he is accepted upon himself, loved in the Dini Yisrael to be judged by Jewish court. And that's why we're doing that. That's why we're, we're making this announcement for 30 days. If so, if he's accepting to be ruled by a Jewish court, then he shouldn't be collecting interest either. If he's not collecting interest, why are you paying the loan right now? Because you don't go to the you don't pay the Yisrael's loan off unless there's interest. That's the rule of Rasa. So the Gemara says like this: Shekibu He accepted upon himself to be judged by the court, yes, but he didn't take it upon himself not to collect for interest. So he's collecting interest, but he says, oh, "I'm happy to go to your courts." And that's the case where the Chachamim will announce for thirty days before they sell the property to pay off this guy's debt, to pay off the loan they owe to this guy, because he because he's collecting. Right, because he's collecting interest. Right, he's collecting interest, which is why they're selling, and he accepted upon himself also to listen to the Jewish courts, and that's why we're going to announce this thing for thirty days. All right, then the Gemara goes on to ask other such questions between Avas and Abraham. Now, finally, the last question the Gemara asks is in the next picture. Tashma says the Gemara come and listen. Amanas v'itin leishek suba. When they make this announcement. When they're announcing that they're selling the property, they should announce that the reason why we're selling the property is like is Isha Ksubasa, is to give to the widow her ksuba, and to pay off the debt to the creditor. So the Bishle Balchoy, Ben the Mar, Ben Mar Kadashanina. When it comes to the loan, the creditor, we've already answered the question earlier. With Ravasi, we explained for our purposes, we're sticking with Ravasi. For Vasi, the book already explained that we're talking about a, a, a creditor who's a guy who took it upon himself to be judged by the Jewish court, but didn't take upon himself to refrain from interest. But Ella Ksubasa, when it comes to Ksuba, why are we announcing that we're selling the loan for Ksuba? According to Yochanan, Micha, it's good because Yochanan agrees to the Vasi in principle that you don't pay off on your son's debt. But he says, with the exception of Ksuba. Okay, so that's clear. 
But Ella Ravasi Kashe, because Ravashi's whole premise and his arguing with Rabbi Yechonon is that you never make the children pay off the debt, even a ksuba, unless a zirbis. So why would the Mishnah therefore say that when you make this announcement selling the Yisemim's property, you're making an announcement that we're selling it for ksubas? For ksuba? You're not, you're not, you don't pay off a ksuba. She says the Gemara Hachamayas Kinon, Shechayiv Moida. This is a case where the husband slash father, before he died, admitted that he owes the money. And because he admitted, therefore, we sell the property right away to pay it off. As opposed to waiting until the children are older so they can argue their case and say, well, we didn't pay, we did pay, it was paid or wasn't paid. Because he declared he didn't pay, therefore we make it pay right away. Now the Gemara asks, Hash the Aslachim, if you're anyways going to say that we're talking about a case where the husband slash father before he died claimed or, or agreed, acknowledged the, the debt, then Kulunamika Shechai Moida, same thing true of all the cases, even the Balchayif. Which means, therefore, right? Which means, therefore, if there's a balchayv, if the father, if the father admits before he dies that he didn't pay, then lachoria would collect from the son. right? You would collect from the son. More than just the chazaka. It will break. Uh, yeah, more than just the chazaka. That's right, it means, means you need more than just the chazaka, which means ordinarily the chazaka stands. But it's not enough against your saying, but the father admits, and they admit. So yeah. you, need, you need aiding to that, but the father admits. So, yeah, presumably you need aiding to that. Now let's see, Tyson actually first goes, one second. Okay, so let's see now, Tysus. Now, Miu, right? It's the line begins with the word. I lost it already. Yeah, pull to the Yeshua. Sorry, Miu, Yeshua, Vidaya, but we can make it Aya. That I feel that Ravuna, that even Ravuna, the Mafarish time machine, it's already who he is according to his reasoning. The reason why ordinarily you don't. Even it's Achaz Manai. The reason why you don't pay off the Yisraelim's debt is because maybe the father paid it off earlier. Like of Yisraelim Tanim, you still wouldn't collect from little children. I feel Teres Manai, even if it's early. Where Lachor, this Chazaka, he didn't pay, which undermines everyone's reason that's early. The guy put away money. Right? What's the Raya? Because the part of the Gemara asks in Erechim, we just read it, Allah the Ravasi, on Ravasi's opinion. Ravasi is the one that said, that you do not pay off the debt of the children unless they're losing money on ribbis. That's what Ravasi when he said that. And the Gemara asked, but Peter Shumay Yisraelim. But what does it mean? Gemara asked, what does it mean that you're appraising the property of the children? The there's no debt to pay off. And the Gemara Vidachik Allah, and the Gemara squeezed to answer, Lishnuye to respond. And it's talking about Balchoiv or Akum. The little hey there says to add the word Akum Goy. It's a Goy Shibalchoiv. It's a non Jewish uh, creditor. Shekibo Lov Lazu, which accepted upon himself to be judged by the court. Voloy Lazu, but didn't accept upon himself to not collect ribbis. Right? That's what the Gomorrah's answer was. So Taisa says if Rav Hono would say you're allowed to collect from children if it's Taisa's money, then the Gomorrah should have said, Hachab Mayas Kinon. What are we talking about here? With your time didn't arrive, where it's with a father died, Tayyus Mani. If Rav if Rav is of the opinion that you're allowed to collect from Yisrael when the father dies, Tayyus Mani, then that would be your simple explanation for why the why the court is appraising court appraising the property of Yisrael. Why say that there's a goyish guy who took on half the halachas of Eden? Just is the haraya that you cannot collect from children even if it died, Tayyus Mani. Now, the aim Lemar, don't suggest that he sugya saw the time of their papa. Don't suggest that that Gemara there follows their papa, who says that the reason why you cannot collect from children is because they're not bar, they're not bar of yet, and it's a mitzvah to pay back, and they're not bar mitzvah yet. That can't be the reason why. The maskan of Mishani, because at the end, what does the Gemara say? When the father before he died admitted to owing. And that answer does not follow our papa. Because according to our papa, but the re you never pay back. Even if the father admitted that I owe, he still wouldn't pay back. 
So if the Gemara over there concludes that at the end of the day, that reason why you're not, the reason why you're collecting from the children is because the father said I didn't pay back, means that the issue is not their, their, their being bar mitzvah, which means the issue is only maybe the father paid early. And yet the Gemara still doesn't say that when the, when the father dies, tells money, collect, which would have been the simplest answer. Is the Haraya that even according to you don't collect from children. Which means, therefore, the Chazaka is not strong enough to outweigh the possibility that the father paid off the debt, the, the, the debt not to saddle his young children with debt. Chazaka does not outweigh that. Fair? Yeah? Okay, right now, as I says, let's go to the very words of Ravasi in Abirkan. That itself, we can prove this point. How's that? Ravasi, the Kamar Elon came to Besecheles. Ravasi said, the only exception for when you pay off a child's a debt that the Yisrael have inherited, is when they're losing money on interest. Ravirkanon and Ravirkanon, Eina Moisif, agrees with the entire premise of Ravasi, with the exception of one case. Except for paying off the, the suba of the wife, the widow, because she needs to eat and she needs to live. So the fact that Rabbi Yochanan is so narrow, mashma implies that a creditor there are no circumstances under which a balchay can collect the money from Yisraelim. Otherwise, Rabbi Yochanan would have qualified. In other words, you have two people speaking, both of which give an exception. If no one gave an exception, it's an unqualified statement. And the Gemara could say, here's one exception, here's two exceptions, just two exceptions. But first of all, Ravasi himself gives an exception, except never collect, never pay off unless there's debt, unless there's interest. And Abirchim gives another qualifier and says, no, one more exception. When you do it that way, you can't start adding second, third, fourth. Otherwise, they would have said so. So this itself is a raya that you don't collect from your southern earth. From, for, you don't collect from Yisrael early, otherwise the Gemara would have said that that's another exception. Another exception of when you pay, use the estate to pay off a debt is when it's Taisman, that would have been another, another, another qualifier, another exception. Now it says Taisis, however, there's a problem with this because the people there who are speaking is Rav Asi and Rav Yechman. They don't have to agree with Rish Lakesh. We're trying to prove that us who pass from like Rish Lakesh that says that there's a Chazaka person never pays early, that Chazaka doesn't apply to a father who leaves behind young children. That's what we're trying to prove. But what if Rabbi Yechon and Navasi don't even agree with Rabbi Yechon's premise at all? And they say that a person would pay early, like Rav and Abaye. If that's the case, it doesn't help us if we pass collector like Shlokish. Because your Shlokish might say, it, no, it's like this. If you follow your Shlokish that the person never pays early, then that rule goes even if the father dies early with, with, with young little children. I, Rabbi Yechonon doesn't use that as an exception. It's because he rejects Rabbi Yechonon's pre or premise com com completely. He's in the opinion that a person would pay early. And that's why he doesn't use the exception of, 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 a, of a person who died test money. Because a person does pay test money, like a Bayan Rabbah, who says the father of Yechonon is of the opinion, Rabbi Yechonon and Ravasi follow Rish Lakish Bukla. Who says that they accept that Chazak? Yeah. So says this, this is a rather bad logic. The whole thing can't, can't. Help prove our yes, it's right. It's, this whole the whole Rabbi and Ravasi discussion cannot prove what we would pass in following Rish Lakish. Mm -hmm. If Ravasi and Rabbi Echanan reject Rish Lakish as a and they say that a person might pay early, but if you follow the Chazaka, the person never pays early, then he never pays early, even if he leaves behind young children. Perhaps. Well, Perhaps. Say that, yeah. yeah. So, but Tesis therefore says, look, I can't say for sure, but Mistama, most probably, most probably, Rav Asi and Rav Echanan do agree with Rish Lakish. Why would we say that they follow Rish Lakish? Because we pass them that way. And why should we sell a sudden start making new machlekes? Why do that? Get the possible response as we pass in our Gemara. The Gemara says, Now, wait, moreover, if Rav Yochanan rejects, if Rav Yochanan and Rav Asi, Reject Rish Lakish is Chazaka. And they're of the view of buying up that a person would pay early. And that's why they don't collect from children when it's tax money, because a person could pay early. Then you run into a different problem. The different problem is that the Yechon and Rish Lakish are consistently, continuously body plucked. They were brother in laws. Rabbi Yechon and Rish Lakish were brother in laws. Rish Lakish married Rabbi Yechon's sister. 
someone should uh, make a script or something out of their, their, their biography, how they met and how it ended. It ended very terribly, actually. Shlokish died early and the curse, and then he got into a fight with his sister. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a pretty story at the end, but the bottom line is they were Havrusas and brother-in-laws. And they're constantly arguing. And the Gemara says, in King Khan, so in, and the Gemara says that in every single halacha that there's an argument between Rabbi Yechon and Rabbi Yechon, we follow Rabbi Yechon, with the exception of three cases. With the exception of three cases, that's what the Gemara says. That in, across the board, every machlek is between Rabbi Yechon and Rabbi Yechon, we follow Rabbi Yechon with, with the exception of three cases. Now, if now Rabbi Yechon and Rabbi Yechon are arguing, that Rabbi Yechon goes with, with Rabbi Nabai that a person does pay, pay early, and Rabbi says we don't pay early, and here we're passing like who, like Rabbi Yechonon, that would mean there's a fourth machlek is where we follow Rish Lakish. I'm sorry, but here we're passing like Rish Lakish that, you, that a person never pays early, which would mean that, that would mean a fourth machlek is where we follow Rish Lakish against Rabbi Yechonon, where the Gemara elsewhere said it's limited to three only. Yeah, if they disagree because Rabbi Yechonon Erechin says, correct, okay, so because, yes, because Rabbi Yechonon Erechin doesn't make an exception to the rule and say, doesn't say, that another exemption for when you can collect from your son is when the father dies, and the reason why he says that is because he argues with Reish Lakish, because a person might pay early. And here the Gemara passing is like Reish Lakish. That would mean there's a fourth machlekes where we pass like Reish Lakish against the With the Gemara elsewhere says it's three. That's the place he says. In Cain, if so, Kaimalon, that means we pass in Reish Lakish, like Reish Lakish, in four areas. But in the beginning of the Gemara in and Reisha Chilitz, the Perak and Yevamis, like Pasuk Rava Kavasei El Betlas, Rava declares that we only follow three. Now we just introduce Rava, and this makes another problem. Why? <laughs> you got to twist your head. Why? Why is Rava a problem? Because Rava over here rejected Reisha Chilitz to begin with. So Rava is the one that says we pass like a Rishon three times, but we might pass like Reisha Chilitz four times. Who's the one that said in Chilitz we're limited to three times that you follow Reisha Chilitz and not a Rishon? Only three. That was Rava. Because Rav Ataka Paskin like Rabbi Yechonon in this case, uh, right? This is what it says. I've got the Rav about the Polo Gerish Lakish Bishmaitin. Even though Rav here is the, disagrees with over here, the, our Gemara is a Machlekes Rish Lakish and Abai and Rav. Abai and Rav say a person would pay early. Rish Lakish says a person never pays early. Now we're suggesting that Rabbi Yechonon. Moving a case where Rish Lakish, where, where the halach is like Rish Lakish, he says not a halacha here. It's like Rabbi Yechonon, exactly. So Rabbi Yechonon is, is exactly. disagrees with Rish Lakish then. Exactly. Exactly. So Rav is, no, Rav could be saying, those are the three cases of followers Lakish. This case, whether you pay early or not, I follow Rabbi Echanan. And a person would pay early, which is why Rabbi Echanan says, we're not going to collect from children. We're not going to collect from children who, 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 whose father died, Teres Mane. Which gets back to the original point, which is, if we do follow Rish Lakish, we still have no proof yet that you cannot collect from children early. Maybe you can. Because the only reason why Rebbechanan doesn't include that is because Rebbechanan disagrees with Rish <laughs> like Rava. Maybe. But nonetheless, Taisa says, still pushes, the Kamukam nonetheless, Gamud Bididan, even to us, Muchach, meaning even us, post Rava, it's clear to Lloyd Kamel and Kresh Lakish Elbatlas that we only follow Rish Lakish in three dinim and against Rebbechanan, not four. Meaning, it's, meaning this statement of Rava, Rava happens to have articulated it, but it's a rule we all accept. Which means universally only three times are we ever going to pass like a shlokish against a Yechonon, which means in this case in our in our Gemara, where we pass like a shlokish that a person never pays back early, that is not an argument with a Yechonon. A Yechonon agrees that a person would never pay back early, and yet we still don't collect from children early. But it's all predicated on the fact that this statement of Rava that you that you accept, that this statement from Rava, that we only pass like a shlokish in three cases. That's if we accept that this statement is a universal statement according to everybody, not just limited to Rav himself as an individual, but actually the way we pass can also. Right? So, Moshe, with me? It's a bit of a twi uh, brain twister. With me? Sorry? I got that part. Yeah? Okay, good. That's where we're at. Yeah, so let's 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 take us where we are because before we go forward, Tess is gonna bring another raya, but I just want to make it clear what the raya is hanging on and why it's hanging on this. We're trying to prove 
that even though the chazaka is like a shlakish, we pass like a shlakish, that we that a person never pays early, we still want to demonstrate that if a father dies early and leaves behind young children and it's before the due date of the debt, you still would not collect that debt until the children are older. And Lachoga, why not? The, we know for sure the father didn't pay because Chazaka didn't pay yet. The only premise, maybe why not, is because a guy, Nebach, is about to die and he, see, he doesn't want to saddle his children with young children with debt, so maybe he paid it off. But is that maybe big enough to, strong, to overpower the Chazaka? And Toysis is pushing to say, yes, it does overpower the Chazaka, and therefore you cannot collect early from children. And wait till they're older. Fine. That's what we're trying to prove. How are we proving that? We're proving that because. Rabbi Yochanan and Rabbi Asi, when they say that you never take money from children to pay off their debt, with the exception of two cases, to pay off a ksuba, according to Rabbi Yochanan, and B, according to Rabbi Asi and Rabbi Yochanan, if the debt that you're paying off is incurring interest. Those are the only two exceptions for when you're allowed to take assets from the estate of the, the children inherited and pay off a debt. Otherwise, under no circumstances can you pay off a debt. If that's the case, then that means you cannot collect the debt that when the father died early, because otherwise there would be another exception to the rule. Okay. This only works if Rabbi Yechanan and Rabbi Asi agree with the premise of Rish Lakish that you never pay early. And the exception is that the father dies early, which is why you don't take the money from him if he died early. You don't take the money from the children if he died early. But if Rabbi Asi and Rabbi Yechanan reject the premise of Rish Lakish, and they're of the opinion that people too do pay back early, then that explains why you don't collect from children when they're early because a person never pay, pay, never because a person may pay back early, and that's why you can't collect because the person may pay it back already because the person does pay back early always as a rule. So, so then why can you collect? Why can't in the cases that they name? Why why can they collect the river? In the, in the case of river, why can you why, pay back? Yeah, why is there? Oh, because there's there's, there's adim, there's a star. The witnesses of the star, whatever it is. Right? And the witnesses in the star in the case of the Chazaka wouldn't be enough to override the Chazaka anyway? Witnesses in the star would be able to override the Chazaka. But in the case where there's no Chazaka, do I say it in the case where there's no no aid in the star like that, we don't know which way, whether it was paid off or not paid off, do we say because it's early for sure it wasn't paid off? And then we collect anyways. So, but Rabbi Yechanan, that's, Rabbi Yechanan would say, the reason why you're not collecting is because I reject the whole idea of not paying early. People do pay back early. And if we wait till the children are old enough to, to make the case that their father pay back early. Because a person might pay back early, right? And if that's the case, then we who say people don't pay back early, maybe that rules universal, even when a guy dies, early, guy dies, dies young, with young children. Right? But because the Rav said, and we only and, and we decided, Tosis decided that when Rabbi made the statement, he meant it according to everybody, that we only pass like a shlokish in three cases against Rabbi Yechanan. And, and we pass can for sure, like a shlokish here, that a person does not pay back early. That must mean that Rabbi Yechanan agrees to that statement from Rabbi Because if Rabbi Yechanan doesn't agree with that statement from Rabbi this would be a fourth case when we follow Rabbi But that's only if Rabbi is speaking on our behalf. Because if he's speaking on his own behalf, he rejected Rabbi Shlakish anyway. So it could be, you know, it's if Rabbi is speaking on his own behalf, that I only follow Rabbi Shlakish in three cases. I only follow Rabbi Shlakish, on, I only follow Rabbi Shlakish in three cases. Then maybe Rabbi Shlakish and Rabbi Shlakish are arguing here about whether a person pay back, paid back early. And the reason why Rabbi says only three is because he thought it doesn't pass like a Shlakish. He passes like a Rabbi Shlakish, you pay early. So it's all based on the fact that Taisus is saying that Rabbi is speaking on our behalf, not on his behalf personally. Rabbi is speaking universally. We only follow his location in three cases. Period. End of story. That's the whole premise of this thesis. And this is the one part of the thesis he doesn't explain. He doesn't explain why is it that you're so certain of what Rav is talking on everybody's behalf. Maybe he's talking on his own behalf. I only follow Rav in three cases. I, Rav Lakish, and Rav are arguing in a different case about Chazaka, and you follow Rav Lakish and say that a person never pays back early. I reject that. I follow Rav and if that's the case, if Rabbi Yechon and Rish Lakish are arguing, then we have no proof that in Rish Lakish's opinion, you can buy for, you can collect from children 
you can't collect from children early. Maybe you could collect from children early because it's like the guy never paid, even though there's little children here. Following? Okay, so with that, now let's look at the, the Shulchan Aruch. I posted a picture of the Shulchan Aruch in the WhatsApp. So first, actually the first picture there, I said that our Shash. So he quotes this part where Tesha says, nonetheless, it's clear from Asa Tesis that when Rabbi speaks, he's speaking on our behalf, and we only pass like a three cases against the Rechem. Says the Rashash, Matsasi, Makalazar. And then so, I, so far, I haven't found the source of this. The Rashash was, to put it nicely, not a chassid, so he uses this language. But nonetheless, and if he says he hasn't found the source for it, it's pretty heavy. So I don't, so he's saying, I don't, okay, well, Taisi says that we're only following the Shlakish, the three Machlakish and like the Shlakish, not against the Bechlin. Rasha says, I don't know where it is. Anyway, okay, so now look in the next piece, the Shulchan Aruch. Yeah. Hakevei is man l'chaveroi, one he who sets a time to collect the debt from his friend, the Tomitur's money, and he comes to collect the money early, and the other guy says, I paid you back already, it's early. Any number is not Nemon, the Chazaka, because the Chazaka is the Ain, other Pedev Tech money, a person does not pay early. This is our Gemara Deish Lakish, right? Bafilimi asked me, even from, from orphans, Shemei Saloiva, the creditor, right? The, the debtor, the Loiva, whatever. Loiva died, the borrower. The borrower, the borrower died, he says money before the time the debt is up. And left behind the Senim, even if they are children. You can let the money below Shavu without a Shavu. So the Shulchan Aruch rejects Taisus. The whole Taisus is hanging on this notion that Eishlokish and Rabbi Echanan are not arguing. And what's the proof that they're not arguing? Because Rava, who anyways passed is not like Eishlokish, is the one who told us we follow Eishlokish only in three cases. Mm -hmm. So the Shulchan Aruch doesn't have to accept this. And, there, and there's others, Rabbi Yon and others, that disagree with this, with this whole Taisus. And they pass, can you could collect from Yisrael even if they're time. Because the Shulchan Aruch. You, if the guy died early, then he did not pay. Definitely did not pay. Finished. Where there are really four disagreements between Yehudah. But we don't know what Yehudah is. No, if okay, that's a good question. Um, um, is this a fourth? If you if you pass in like Shulchan Aruch, that you may collect from children that are that their father died early. Does that mean it's not like it's between Rabbi Yechanan and Reish Lakish? Because otherwise, why didn't Rabbi Yechanan use this? No, it's not like it's. Why is it not like it's? The whole Taisus premise was, why didn't Rabbi Yechanan add a case where you can collect early? Oh, yeah, no, it's a good question. Yet it might be if it's not like it's between Rabbi Yechanan and, and Reish Lakish. Perhaps it's not like it's because why didn't Rabbi Yechanan add this as another exception to the rule that ordinarily you don't collect money from your son with the exception of Ksuba, an exception of an interest, and exception when the guy died early. But, Why wasn't that added? But the answer is, well, he didn't name all the exceptions. He named these part, these two exceptions. It's it's very shock to say that. But anyway, the, the next picture, there's a Biri Hagra there. I, I didn't fully understand everything in the Biri Hagra, but he, he says clearly the like of Taisus, right? That I feel you say, I feel upon him. But Taisus shomter maska, I feel you by Rabbi Yonah Chalka Mazer. Rabbi Yonah agree, disagrees with Taisus, and the Shochan Aruch follows Rabbi Yonah. Okay, so the next thing says the same thing like that. I didn't get all the lines there, but I want to show. He goes through all the rayas and rejects the rayas. Now he says like this at the end. Now, the line starts with the ha. The ha, the rava, Allah, Kadesh, Lakish, Badalit. Now, as to the fact that Toysis mentions that Rava did not say that there are four times you follow Rish Lakish rather than three, Mishum de Rava, less late than Rish Lakish. Because Rav himself rejects the Shlakish. But Ashtaisis Sasuze, even though Taisis disregarded that, disregarded the saying that it's exclusively Rav who follows the Shlakish in three times, but we follow him four times. Right? How did he, he, he disregard that? By saying, to us too, it's clear that we follow the Shlakish only in three not, and not four cases. And therefore, Taisis concludes the Machlakish between the Shlakish and the Bechan here. So now here's the line that I want to read from the Gera, because here's where he explains why Taisa says that. Why does he say that Rav's statement is universal? Says the Gera, Ratzalaymar, Taisa means to say, 
So the very fact that the Gemara makes mention of Rav's statement more than once. And the reason why the Gemara makes the mention more than once is because it's universally accepted. This is what the, 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 the Gemara is saying is Tysus is far. Even though Rasha said he doesn't find an eye for it, this is the Gemara's eye because the Gemara mentions it more than once, mentions it numerous times. Okay, but now, but nonetheless, Rabbi Yenya rejected this, and so the Shachnar rejected this. Right? So, which means the Shachnar, like you're saying, actually saying there is a fourth machlech like between Shlokish and Rabbi Yechna. I don't Rabbi said you only follow Shlokish in three. That's your opinion, Rabbi, because you disagree with the whole Shlokish thing to begin with over here. Okay. So it says, it says the Gra, means a mukach. Dafka, hey, for the late of the Hmm. Not sure. The angel Mokhaf, this is not certain. Specifically, somewhere was not explicitly stated. That's literally the translation. Angel Mokhaf. I think just that the, the fact not that sure. it appears in two places is not uh, a convincing enough proof for him. Yeah, but he doesn't say what and why. He explains why. Because Dafka, Hecha, the light is my behavior. It's there, no, maybe they're saying there's no general principle that just because something appears in two places means it's true. I guess so. Oh. The Ainzer Mukhaf Dafka, this is not explicitly proof. Hecha can. We're like Rabbi Hedjik is not explicitly stated as such. Yeah, but the comma after the word dafka. Yeah, I guess that, that's kind of what he's saying. All right, so we get this overview there. Okay, let's conclude the Tesis. Now, Tesis concludes as follows. We peric dal of the hay in Baba Kama. The part of Rabbi Yechanan, the Gemara asks on Rabbi Yechanan, the Omar, which said, Malia Sisanu. That if the um, if the ox of a of Yisraelim had caused damage, and now you have to collect to pay off the the, the, the damage. So over there, there's no concern. Maybe the, the father paid the off. Thing? Sorry. The ox that's still in the estate, it hasn't been. Yeah, yeah, they're they're they're, they're young children, right? They're tani, so it's still part of the estate. And the Yisraelim now, and the shoyer now gore. So you can't say the father paid off early. It didn't happen. It only happened after the father died, right? So the Gemara asks there, as Rabbi Yechonon made a statement, that you collect from the, from the best, that's not lawful, when it comes to music, and you pay from the Idris, from the best. Okay. So it says the Gemara, Amar, Rabbi Yechonon, the Gemara asks there, but didn't Rabbi Yechonon say, the Gemara asks, the Gemara asks, why could, how could Rabbi Yechonon say that you pay off the, the damage caused by the estate, by the share in the estate? From the estate, Lachora, you know, pay off unless it's for Ksuba. That was a Birchman statement. Now, comments tell us, I forgot the Kaimalan. The time I have in Mishum Tzirari, even though we Paskin, like Rav Huna, that the reason why you don't go to the, the reason why you don't pay off debts from the estate of the father is because maybe the father put away money, put away a stash. And that reason didn't apply here. But when it comes to ox that damage, you can't say if the father put away money because it happened after the father died. But part of Shapat Rabbi Yechon is like the end of Stockholm. Nonetheless, the Gemara still asked, ah, how can you pay back? Means Rabbi Yechon's statement is universal. There's no other circumstance in which you pay back except like Sibba. Even if a, a creditor comes after, it's, even if a credit comes, even if a, a, a lender comes from them, I mean, they lent money out. The children lent money out. So there's no way the father paid back. We still don't collect money. The way Shai Tzorari, you still cannot say that the father put the money away. So why aren't you collecting? So says the Torah, Mitam, the Indah Kam, Eidish Lebev, Father, the Fenevah Din, because it's another cloud. You don't collect money if the children aren't old enough. Right, Rav Hunahed? Sorry? With the Chazaka, we don't need Eidish. Sorry? With the Chazaka, but with the Chazaka, you don't need Aedis. And the only time Taisha says it might come to clash is when you have Aedim while the father was still alive. Right? That's what Taisha said at the beginning. 
Right, you need aid in for the existence for the loan, of the, the existence of the loan. Uh, but those aid cannot come now after the father's died, dead, because after the father's dead, they're not old enough, right? Avuna made two stages to his statement. First, he said, because maybe the father put away money, and then he went on to say um, that the children, right? It was Kufan Dalid. Bob Bas is here in Kufan Dalid. Sorry, I passed it. No, the Gemara doesn't say that there. So when the just introduced the idea of children who aren't old enough, oh, he basically says, yeah, Tyson so basically says there's that when it comes to your son, there's a separate issue. Taka generally, you don't collect from the son because maybe the father paid off. But when it comes to children, there's a separate issue, which is, they're not, they're not legit litigants to be able to collect ADAS. And therefore that would prevent you from making them pay back um, and um, show that damaged and loans that they lent out. Which means when a bear makes a statement, you never collect the debt from this, you never collect the debt from the estate that the children have. There's actually two reasons. If you're talking about a debt that came about before the father died, then the reason is because, actually maybe for three reasons. If, there's, if you're coming to collect a debt, Three reasons, according, three reasons according to the Shulchan Aruch and two according to Texas. So two according to Texas are like this. Either if they're coming to collect a debt that the father had before he died, maybe paid it off, right? And this is true according to Texas, even if the loan, even if the guy died before the loan due date's up, he still made a payback. And that's why even if you have aid them to the, even if you have aid them that came while the father was alive to the effect of the loan, he still can't collect because maybe he paid off before he died. Reason two is, if you're talking about debts that incurred to them after the father's death, you still can collect because they're not eligible litigants. That's meaning a damage, a damage that was caused by their property after the father died, or they lent money to somebody, whatever. But then they still can't because they're not legit litigants. According to the Shulchan Aruch, there'll be three reasons according to their bailment. If it's debt that existed from the, when the father was alive, maybe the father paid it off. If the father died before the debts were up, the reason why you don't collect it is because a person might have paid back earlier. Because the Rebbe follows Rav Anabaye, right? Which is the fourth mach like between the Shlokish and the Rebbe. And then number three, I guess they would still agree with this, I don't know, but I'm assuming they would still agree with this final point that you don't collect uh, debts that incurred after the father's death because they're not old enough litigants. Mm -hmm. This is our Taisvis. Requires much Hazara. Mm -hmm. All right, let's jump tomorrow night, the next two Tyson.